I really dislike the expression killing two birds with one stone, and that's because I really try not to kill birds. But in this episode of Ronnie Wong's Journey to CCIE, we are going to kill two birds with one stone. We are going to not only take a look at the Ether Channel feature that we need to be responsible for in the CCIE lab exam, but we're also going to take a look at how you prepare for a topic as a CCIE candidate. So, so glad you joined us for this episode of Journey to CCIE. So Ronnie, this is probably the area where I get uh, a huge number of questions. I wouldn't say the Makes most, sense. but yep, this is like where the student goes, okay, wait a minute, Anthony, I know it's really published and well-documented how well I need to know Ether Channel for CCNA right. and for that CCNP, but well, what's the big deal about IE then? And the first point I want to make there is one of the reasons I always recommend CCNA and CCNP for CCIE students is that if they do a really great job in those studies, if they go to Ronnie Wong's uh, CCNA show at IT Pro TV and they're taking notes and they're following along practice labbing with Ronnie and they're doing all that work, they're well on their way to CCIE and they won't have as much work to do at, at the CCIE level. But Ronnie, we still have work to do. And what I would suggest is that you and our students start with the configuration guide. So you can see I've brought that up here, Ronnie, and this has a lot to do with our documentation episode, right? So we gotta be really quick at finding the Ether Channel documentation and then, Ronnie, you're going to want to read this and take notes on this, perhaps, at least once, maybe multiple times, because you are also tested on design. Okay. And think about it, Ronnie. That's all of this narrative here. You know, this is all talking about restrictions and caveats and requirements that you need to do with Ether Channel, and this is all part of design awareness. So it's kind of interesting, Ronnie. We used to be reading this narrative before to prepare for the written, right? But now we're preparing for the written portion of the lab exam itself, if you will. Okay. That design portion, and then of course, when it comes to the part Ronnie loves, I bet knowing Ronnie as well as I do now. What Ronnie wants to do is he wants to actually go into something like CML and he wants to take these two links right here and he wants to bundle them together in an ether channel. So now Ronnie's not practicing the design any longer. Ronnie is practicing the implementation. And so he's going to go and he's going to look at the underlying running configuration on those two interfaces and he's going to contemplate that before he gets started with his config. Let's say we need to do a layer two ether channel with these two interfaces on these two switches. And so then he's gonna do his interface range command and he's going to make these interfaces twins in their configuration. He'll use the switch port command. He'll say switch port trunk encapsulation uh, to build his trunk, encapsulation dot one Q, switch port mode trunk. And once he's got all his trunking configuration in place, he'll do his channel group one mode. And of course, here's our quick uh, ether channel review. We've got link aggregation and control protocol, active and passive modes. And then we've got PAG-P, the port aggregation protocol with its auto and desirable. PAG-P, Ronnie, going away. Right. Yep, it's fading out of existence uh, because it's Cisco proprietary and LACP is what we want to do. But for the lab exam, you can't make any assumptions. Right. 
and you're going to study PAGP as well as LACP, and you'll be ready to answer the design and the uh, implementation questions. Now, Ronnie, when you're doing this lab practice, mm -hmm. one of the things that we all tend to make the mistake of is we go in and we make this, in my case, we're doing an active LACP configuration here, and then we go over to the other device and we do this perfect config, and we see the ether channel come up, and then we practice verifying the ether channel with show ether channel summary, and we are missing something here with our ether channel practice, Ronnie. Okay. And what it is, is breaking it. All right. I want you to take extra time in your lab practice, and I want you to intentionally break things. All right. Hugely important. This is going to allow you to ensure you can see what it looks like when features are broken. Okay. And it also ensures that you have practiced quickly fixing things. All right. It is inevitable in the lab exam uh, deployment section or configuration section, Ronnie, it's inevitable that there will be things for you to fix and you got to be able to do it quickly. And it's also inevitable that you will make mistakes throughout the day. You'll put an access control list in the wrong place. You'll go and configure an ether channel incorrectly and you want to know what that looks like. I know it's going to be hard for our students to do this because we are kind of trained not to make mistakes, but I want you to come in here and I want you making mistakes. For instance, what would happen if we went to the other side of this device and we did this? Let me do the encapsulation real quick. And then what we're going to do is we are going to... Uh, cause a mismatch. Watch, Roddy. And and you'll start to enjoy this once you get used to intentionally breaking things. But I'm going to go channel, group, one, mode, and I'm going to say desirable. So now we have one side of this link attempting to do PAG P. We have another side attempting to do link aggregation and control protocol. And we can already see look at this, uh, that the interfaces are up. And did we get anywhere with our ether channel? Uh, let's see. I think we have standalone. Look at this, standalone. So these interfaces are not bundled. And look at this, and the down. D, the down flag. And Ronnie, isn't this cool? We're not used to seeing this. Mm -hmm. So we're used to seeing this perfect output from our perfect practice. But this is that extra step that we want to do as we are studying. Okay. Also, Ronnie, one more tip for you. When you are studying your Ether channel at the CCIE level, it's also the time where you want to try some of the commands that aren't so common. For instance, we're so used to doing show ether channel summary. Well, what does just show ether channel give you? You know, now's your time to experiment. Uh, another great one is like, okay, in addition to summary, what other options are there? And sure enough, look at this. I could do show ether channel detail. And now I would definitely get additional information about the protocol mismatch. Okay. All right. So these are some tips, Ronnie, for you on studying the documentation and any design guides that you can come across for your topic. That's for the design section. And then, of course, getting in a tool like CML, practicing for the deploy section. Be sure to break stuff. See what that looks like. Be sure to try those additional show commands, see what they reveal to you. And also, you might want to do some debugging as a way to help you learn the particular feature. Well, that's it for this episode, Ronnie, but I've got great news for our audience out there. You and I have cooked up an episode for them coming up that's going to be all about 
doing the lab practice for the CCIE lab exam, you saw that I was using the Cisco modeling labs. In the next episode of Journey to CCIE, we will give you a whole bunch of great ideas when it comes to hands-on practice for the lab exam. Until next time, signing off for IT Pro TV on behalf of Ronnie Wong and myself, Anthony Sequera, we are thrilled you joined us for this episode and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here and click the bell so you get notifications of upcoming Journey to CCIE episodes. Thanks so much, everyone.